What's going on YouTube? Another old school sort of video for me. I'm going to be reacting to and doing an analysis of Phil Guymans, what a pro cyclist eats in a day during an interval training day. There was a big glaring issue in this video, which was that Phil, at the end of the day, had a 1500 calorie deficit between what he burned and what he consumed, which I can't get my head around. So what I'm going to do is go from start to finish, run through his food and exercise calculation separately and see where we end up at the end of the video to see how this actually stacks up nutritionally. So let's get into it. I'm gonna get started by looking at his energy expenditure for the day and then we'll get into what he consumes. So over on Chronometer, over in the profile settings, I've put in his body weight, which is 69 kilos as a male. That gives us a basal metabolic rate, which is the absolute minimum number of calories his body is burning just to be alive, which is 1730 calories. Factoring in there a slight activity level throughout the day, getting up, walking to the fridge, walking around, put it in, in as basically little to no exercise, and that's given us an extra 346 calories on top of the 1730. So you can see, just over 2,000 calories, so 2,076 calories, is his total daily energy expenditure, not including exercise. In the video on this day, Phil said he did a three hour ride with some intervals, which according to him came out at around 2,205 calories expended, which makes sense for me, roughly someone his weight, a ride with some intervals might be burning through 700 to 800 calories per hour. So I think his value there of 2205 calories burnt on the ride makes sense. So if we look at then his total daily energy expenditure, including the ride on top of that, that takes him to an energy burn throughout the day of 4,216 calories as an estimate. He hasn't said in this video that he's specifically trying to lose or gain weight. So what he should be looking to do is at the end of the day, all the food he's eaten throughout the day and including the food he's had on the ride should roughly be 4,216 calories. Throughout the video, Phil put up everything he ate and had the calories calculated from Noom. I'm gonna go do the same thing with everything he ate, but put it into chronometer just to double check the calories. So let's go through it now. I started the day with, uh, with I just chug a big, a big liter of fizzy water. Uh, I always, I don't really count that. I don't put that in the Noom uh, because it's water, but I, I did have just an espresso shot uh, to get going. So he's woken up, he's had his sparkling water, which I'm not even gonna put in because it's zero calories. And he's had one espresso, which is 2.66 calories. Pretty much nothing. All right, so for breakfast, uh, Georgia boy here, I'm going for, uh, for some grits. So it's a quarter cup of the grits and then you add a cup of water and then two eggs and some greens. Uh, the, the key to this uh, that, that I always found is, is timing. I try, to, I try to eat, I try to be finished with breakfast three hours before I'm gonna start riding. So that's uh, time to, to digest and process um, and most importantly, to, to poop. Now he's come back from his walk and he's having his breakfast, which he says he likes to have roughly three hours before his ride, which makes sense. It means it's allowing him time for his blood sugar to go up, stabilize, then come down, and then he can start his ride and start fueling there. So he's not starting his ride while insulin's acting and his blood sugar's going up. So he'll feel good when he first gets on the bike. So if we look at his breakfast, he's had another espresso shot, negligible. Then he's had grits. For those of you aren't in America, grits is a corn-based uh, it's almost like oatmeal, so it's like a porridge or oatmeal consistently, but it's based in corn, pretty healthy. Uh, two, scrambled ed, uh, two scrambled eggs mixed in there, and then some kale, which he's chopped up and put in there. That takes us to a 410 calorie meal, 17 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat. Then he says he doesn't have anything else before he starts his ride, and that's quite surprising, because if he is waiting two or three hours, after having this meal, it's not that big a meal. There's also not that many carbs considering he's going out to do a three hour ride with intervals. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite surprised. It does look like quite a small meal. If I had this meal and then waited three hours and got on the bike, I'd probably be starving by the time I got on the bike. So, so, so that's what he says he does. I just, to me, this just looks like a really small amount of food. But anyway, moving on. All right, so I'm halfway through my workout. I've done half my intervals. Um, 
stop for a, a coffee. You know, I'm not a pro anymore. I can enjoy my, my life. Um, this is the time for a cookie. This is when your body is, you know, you're about to burn sugar, you're absorbing sugar. Uh, so I'm taking care of that. This is, this is the ideal, if you're gonna have one cookie a day, which is, uh, you know, a good way to live your life, uh, mid-ride is when to do it. You're just gonna burn more and fuel more uh, the rest of your ride. Um, so the top of the hour, so instead of having a bar, I'm having, I'm having this guy. Because uh, they don't wanna, that has been shown on my Whoop, that does affect uh, my sleep if I have caffeine. Like 2 p.m. is a good cutoff. Uh, on the bike, Phil said he had a bottle of sports drink. Um, I've matched the calories here. He uses his, I think it's a first endurance one. He then has a first endurance energy bar. I put in Cliff Bar just because uh, they didn't have those, those that specific brand, but this would sort of roughly match those energy bars that he's having with around 40 grams of carbs. He also stopped at a bakery and had a cookie which was about 155 calories, so I've matched that here. And he had another espresso. If this is all he ate, that means he's only had 95 grams of carbs uh, for three hours, which is very low for someone of his fitness level, putting out his sort of power and doing intervals. Uh, only getting less than 40 grams of carbs an hour in an interval session is very low. So I think there's a possibility here that he's under-reported what he had, because he did mention, he did a bit of a chat to the camera and he said he aims, or he recommends aiming for one bar an hour or two gels per hour, which would take him closer to 50 grams of carbs per hour. So I'm not sure, I'm only going off what he's saying, but what he's saying he had here looks very low, which I will get to later in the video, but moving on, the, the first thing I'll do is have a recovery mix, uh, two scoops of the, the Ultragen of this. It's, this is, I do the chocolate flavor Ultragen. Then we do a scoop of beet powder. Next we have some L-glutamine. I forget what that's for. Emily, do you know what that's for? <laughs> uh, and we got some almond butter, a nice, nice lump. This is the controversial part. What is this, mustard greens, chard, some kind of kale, green. I'll keep like some kind of greens in the freezer. To, to go in there and then top it off with apple juice, which is just a nice source of sugar, basically. So let's go through and add this up. I've got the recovery powder here, which is not the exact one he used, but I checked the ingredients and the macronutrients and this matches. So we've got the recovery powder here, the cup of kale, two cups of apple juice, the two tablespoons of almond butter, and then the beetroot powder. For recovery drink smoothie, that takes us to 48 grams of protein, 180 grams of carbs, and 18 grams of fat. So that looks good. Rate that as a recovery shake. Moving on from there, afternoon snack, he said he has nuts. For an afternoon snack, I'm going with the, uh, the pistachios today. That's our inside tracker thing. I was very loyal to the cashew. I was monogamous with the cashew. Uh, inside tracker uh, told me that my last blood test, I should, I should mix up my nuts. So I'm obeying, I'm mixing up my nuts. Which sounds good, but in the little nutritional overlay he put in the video, he said he only had one serve of nuts. And if any of you know serving sizes of nuts, that's tiny. Like a serving size of pistachio nuts is not even a handful. It's like a small handful fit, fitting into the palm of your hand. So anyone that has nuts as a snack is almost always gonna have more than one serving. So I think he's probably under-reporting uh, what he's having here. But putting that in here, that's pistachio nuts, one serve, about 160 calories. So we'll put that in there. All right, for dinner, uh, we do the, the bowl of health. It's vegetable-based. And then we've got some uh, some air fried chicken. Yeah, but we air fried it with uh, some breadcrumbs and Emily's uh, homegrown from the yard rosemary. You see a little rosemary on there. And then the base is just one of those salad kits uh, that you kind of mix up and uh, and some roasted Brussels sprouts that we added to it. You know, like to take a salad kit, but then you make it your own. Um, but it is it is vegetable based. Uh, I don't I don't normally carb at dinner. The carb happens before the ride and after the ride at dinner. Uh, is is the, the bowl of health as we call it. So let's add this up. We've got the salad mix. We've got a skinless chicken breast and then the rosemary there. So dinner, we're looking at 43 grams of protein, nine grams of carbs. So hardly any carbs with this dinner, just a little bit from the breadcrumbs that was on the chicken and five grams of fat. So a very, very low calorie dinner. Also quite a, looks like quite a small, I mean, you got the salad in there sort of, adding a bit of bulk, but 
I mean, it just looks like a very small salad given he's ridden for three hours this day. An almond uh, chocolate milk before bed. I like a little fat and sugar before bed. Uh, I sleep better and you know don't wake up hungry. So, uh, so that's what we're doing here. Um, so thank you for watching. Again, check out uh, for, for Noom. I've got the links below for all those links for everything uh, in the descriptions. So he's got chocolate almond milk. I put in a sweetened version. So we've got 2.7 grams of protein, 35 grams of carbs, and 5.2 grams of fat. Okay, let's cut to the chase. My calculations have him consuming around 2,716 calories. In the video, he said he consumed around 2,600. So pretty close there. There's always a bit of an error when you're estimating calories. Glaringly obvious issue is he's burnt 4,216 calories, which means he's running a 1,500 calorie deficit. That is, that is honestly scary. Someone his body weight, his body fat percentage, running that level of a calorie deficit while trying to train, uh, I, I don't see how this is possible. So let's, let's just double check the maths here. I've got him as 2,716 calories consumed. In the video at the end, his Noom thing said he consumed 2,600, okay? Calories burned, I clocked him at 4,216 calories. In the video, he popped up a WHOOP summary of his day, which had him estimated burning 4,325 calories, which is very close to my calculation, 4,216. So it seems like that is what he burnt. I just don't understand. I, I, I don't, I'm lost, almost lost for words. I don't understand why he's only eating 2,716 calories. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and let's go and have a look and, and see what it could have been. Now, that, those, those pistachio nuts, I, there's no way he only had a serving of pistachio nuts. There's hardly anything. So let's, let's say he had double what he, what he thought he had, 60 grams. Let's say he had 60 grams. That bumps up the calories a little bit. And let's give him the benefit of the doubt on the ride as well. Maybe he, miss, he forgot how much he actually had because that seems quite low. Let's say he actually had two bottles of, of mix and, and another bar, because he was on the, he's on the bike for three hours. So he probably did have another bar, which he's just forgotten to add in. Assuming he ate more on the bike, that gets us a bit closer, but he's still running nearly a thousand calorie deficit, even giving him in the, you know, the benefit of the doubt with some of these calculations. And let's look at the macros here as well. His protein, 142 grams of protein, which is body weight of nearly 70 kilos. So that's, he's having around two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is Good. That's right in the above sort of you know what is recommended um, by sports dietitian. So he's ticked that box. Fat 90 grams. I mean that was with the nuts boosted. So fat's actually quite low. Um, and carbs 450 grams of carbs, which is actually quite low given he's done a three-hour ride with intervals. Uh, if he was you know what you would usually recommend for someone going and at his power output at his fitness level going and doing a three-hour ride with intervals. You know, he'd be looking at saying, let's say, if he wanted to maximize performance on the bike and then recovery if he's training on consecutive days, you'd probably say aim for 80 grams of carbs an hour, which means he'd need to be getting in another roughly 120 grams of, of carbohydrates on the ride. So that is th another three serves of the sport drink. So let's put this in at five. That takes us to 700 calories. That gives us still a 500 calorie deficit. So I, I just don't think he's eating enough food. Even though the macronutrient profile, if you come down here, looks all right because he's hitting his protein targets. The carbs is okay. The fat is you know, within range. Um, if we come down here as well to the nutrients, everything's pretty much ticked. Vitamin D, he said he takes a vitamin D supplement. You get that, some of that from the sun too, usually, depending on your skin type. Everything's hit pretty well. There's just not enough calories. And that's why I wanted to make this video because this is not, pure and simple, this is not a realistic amount of food to be eating for someone who's done the three hour ride that he's done. So I don't know if there's been a miscalculation on his part. Maybe he's forgotten he's eaten something when he's made the video, but this is not physically humanly possible. I mean, you could do it for one day, but you're not gonna be recovering from that session given this amount of food. You're gonna be really bad on the bike the next day because you've drastically under eaten. And this is just not healthy on your body to be having to recover from a three hour ride with intervals when you're in a 1500 calorie deficit. So I'm glad he's done the video. It is very interesting to see. I just think there's something gone wrong here. If you wanna see a more realistic depiction of what it's like to eat in a day to fuel a, a day with three hours of riding, check that out. I'll put the link 
uh, up the top here somewhere. So just a bonus part for this video, considering I've got all this food up here, let's go through this day and see what else I would sort of recommend he'd be eating if he wanted to match the calories closer to what he was burning. I would say, uh, firstly, he could probably up the, the carbs on the bike. So even 80 grams of carbs an hour for someone his fitness level, he could probably go higher, given that he's doing an interval session. He could probably go 100 grams an hour. So that would be an extra 60 grams of carbs throughout this ride. So let's give him um, another energy gel. So there we go, we've got three goo energy gels. We'll move them in there. So if he's had that in, that's another 60 grams, roughly 60 grams of carbs that tops him up. So then he's got 200 calories remaining. Uh, what I would also probably do is, that's a lot of nuts. So let's knock this back to one serving of nuts, which was about 28 grams, and put in another more carbohydrate-based snack in the afternoon to keep that coming in. So let's type in carbo. Type banana one medium banana there in the afternoon, along with his pistachio nuts. This almond milk as well in the evening, there's almost no protein in this, in this almond milk. So I'm gonna change this and see if we can get another, a higher protein um, chocolate milk in the evening. So there we go, I've swapped the chocolate almond milk for a chocolate soy milk, which bumps the protein up to 11 grams before bed. Just a little bit of extra protein coming in before bed to help settle the stomach and get the amino acids coming in. Not a massive change, but it's just if you're gonna be having calories at night, you may as well get a little bit of extra protein in. And other thing I would change here is, I, I'm concerned the start of this ride before he's left, the gap between that small breakfast and then going out for the ride, Let's add in a high GI snack before he, just before he gets on the bike. So if we say a uh, whole meal toast. So two slices of sandwich bread with a tablespoon of peanut butter. And there we go. So we've got 4,200 coming in, 4,200 burned. And a couple of swaps there, just to reiterate, we've got a little high GI snack just before the ride, so the peanut butter on two slices of wholemeal toast with peanut butter, nine grams of protein, 28 grams of carbs, nine grams of fat. We've also got an extra 20 grams per hour of carbs on the bike. We've beefed up his afternoon snack with an extra banana just to add in another little dose of carbs coming in in the afternoon before he gets to dinner. And then, as a, again, bumped up the pre-bed snack for a little bit of extra protein. That matches his calories, and that would be a day that makes sense. But as I said before, that's not what he had. He was missing 1,500 calories. I'm not sure what's going on. That is all for this video. I hope you learned something, had some fun along the way, and I'll catch you in the next one.